obviously, one of the biggest differences between a gasoline car and an electric car is that an electric car has an electric motor. We got our electric motor out of a forklift, and I've got a different motor here to just show you the basics of how a series wound electric motor works. All electric motors work basically the same. We're going to be using a series wound forklift motor. In any motor, it's one magnetic field pressing against another magnetic field that makes the motor spin. Now there's more than one way to do that. Uh, in smaller motors, it might be a permanent magnet motor. That means one of the set of magnets are mineral magnets, permanent magnets. And then the other magnetic field is created by an electromagnet, the electricity from the batteries through the motor. Now those motors are limited in power because of how, how strong those permanent magnets are. Now if you instead have two electromagnetic fields pushing against each other to spin the motor, um, that's typically a series wound motor. There are some other style motors, uh, we're not going to cover those. Also this is a DC motor. DC motors uh, use electricity straight from batteries. They don't need any circuitry that converts the DC power of the batteries to AC to then run an AC motor. So these are going to be the most simple, durable, robust, powerful motors that you're going to be easily able to get your hands on. And we have just tons of electric forklifts uh, all over the place in factories, in warehouses, and in junkyards. So if you go to a junkyard, odds are that you can find a pretty good motor for not much money. So let's take a look at some of the parts on this motor here. Uh, this came out of a forklift. This was the drive motor. Uh, the style of forklift was one of those kind of three-wheeled ones where there was a single drive wheel in the back and the whole motor rotated on that wheel to steer. Uh, this is a series wound motor. Right up here we have an identification plate that tells us a little bit about it. Uh, it tells us that it's a 36 volt motor. Um, it also has a part number on there, which we could go on the internet, look up, and find some more information on this motor. Now, I took a couple of bolts off the end here just to open it up a little bit, make it a little easier to see in here. But to uh, start with, um, from over here, this is the drive end, the drive shaft. And if I spin this, you can see inside here, it's not just the drive shaft that's spinning, but there's also a large electromagnet inside that's uh, all part of it, that all rotates together. That whole assembly is called the rotor or the armature. Now you also see right inside here is a bearing and the same on the back. So that entire uh, rotor or armature and the drive shaft is all supported on those two bearings. Uh, the whole electric motor is really a very straightforward thing. We've got um, kind of this end cap, that end cap, the middle part, and that armature. That's, there's really only about four parts to this whole thing. So it's really easy to take apart. Typically to take it apart, you're gonna have maybe four or six bolt holes on the end. You pull those bolts out. Um, if you have any bolts on the opposite end, you'll pull those out too. And then you just need to yank this whole thing off and you wanna support the shaft as you do that so that uh, the inside parts don't whack against each other and damage the motor. Now another thing you're going to notice on this motor is that there's four power connections and you're thinking, uh-oh, this doesn't make sense because a battery only has two power connections, a positive and a negative. So the motor should have a positive and a negative as well. Well, that's true, sort of. This is a series wound motor and that means that the electricity that runs through the inside, the armature, and makes that electrical field and the electricity that runs through the field coils, these magnets that are on the outside, the stator, uh, it's all the same electricity and it runs in series between the two. It runs through the one and then it loops and goes through the other and then goes back to the battery. So that's what the four power connections are for. Two of these are for the armature and two of them are for the stator. So on a motor that has four power connections on it, what we're going to do is uh, use a cable or some piece of uh, copper bar to connect two of the power connectors to each other. Now another thing that's kind of interesting here is how you run a series wound motor the opposite direction. If you put the motor in the car and the motor spins the wrong way, you're gonna have multiple gears of reverse and only one forward gear. So we wanna make sure the car goes forwards. Uh, the trick with this is if you find that the motor spins the wrong direction, you simply reverse that crisscrossing power cable. 
so that that way we're reversing the power only on the one magnetic field or the other, not both. If we just swapped the connections on the battery cable, we'd be reversing both fields and the motor would still spin the same direction. Now if you only have two power connections on there, uh, it could possibly be a permanent magnet motor or the other possibility is it's still a series wound motor but that connection is on the inside and you can reverse that it's just going to be a little bit more work because you got to take this whole thing apart go in find that wire cut it and redo that yourself so that's a little bit of a pain uh, four connections makes this a lot easier also if you want you could set up your car to have a power switch that makes your motor spin uh, either direction. Now in my car I didn't do that. I only designed it to go the one direction and I just used reverse gear. Now some motors not only have a drive shaft but they'll also have a tail shaft coming off the other end. The motor that I chose to use for my car did have a tail shaft on it but I actually ended up having to cut it off because the motor was too long to fit in the front of the car. That tail shaft would have gone right into the passenger side tire and that would have been not good for anybody. Now on your motor, it may actually have a horsepower rating on this little identification plate right here. The most important thing to keep in mind for horsepower on an electric motor is it has almost nothing to do with horsepower on a gasoline engine. They really are that different.